crack on with this. We're running out of time. Bloody sun's out. Alright, fellas. Welcome back. We're building the new fermentation fridge today. And I'm going to try and make it as in-depth as possible. Because on the last video uploaded, where I was talking about the extractor unit, people left comments saying, I hope you're going to make it in-depth. Because I want to make one myself. If you haven't got one, or you're thinking about putting one together, so you can ferment your beer in it, or in an R in. If you've got the room, I'd say go for it. You'll see a big, big difference in your beers when you control the fermentation. And then you don't have to worry about uh, your ambient temperature, so you don't have to worry about your, your beers in the shed getting too hot when they're fermenting in the summer. You don't have to wait till November time, back end of October time, to brew up a lager. You can brew up a lager in the midst of summer if you want to the fridge will take care of it for you. It puts the control back in your hands and uh, now I'm gonna run through what you need or what I'm gonna use to build mine. So of course you'll need a fridge, uh, you'll need something to heat the fridge with, you'll need a control unit and you'll need a couple of PC fans that will uh, move the air around inside the fridge so you don't get any hot spots and you don't get any cold spots so it maintains a better temperature in the fridge. So the heating side of it I'm going to use um, a tubular space heater I think it's 30 watts but I could be wrong it might be 60 watts I'll have a look when I get it out. A control unit that I'm using to control both the fridge and the heater is the STC 1000 it's very very popular for doing stuff like this they're relatively cheap you know just to pick one up and the build as a whole is really simple actually putting the fridge together is really really simple the hardest thing you're gonna have to sort of do is wire up the STC but there's diagrams for it and I think it comes with a with a diagram for wiring it up and it even says on the back of the STC where to put the heat where to put the coal coal cold and where to put the uh, where to put the probe. So let's crack on. Of course I've got the GoPro so I'm going to be strapping her to the head and running through everything. So let's crack on. So this is the old fermentation fridge and the first thing we're going to have to do is uh, get this shelf made for this fridge. I can't use this one because this fridge is narrower so I'm going to have to cut a new one. It's basically where the salad sort of bowl goes, the salad tray that you slide out there's normally a glass shelf that sits there in the fridges but I'm gonna make it out of wood and of course cut the holes in it so the heat can permeate through uh, so that's the first job this fridge is hardwired into my control panel which runs the pots and everything I have got the fridge and the heating element wired into the block here so all I have to do is unscrew the screws take out the uh, fridge take out the heating element and then the new fridge will be wired up with the same heating element and away we go. Before I turn off everything on there, let's get this sorted out. So this is the new fridge. It's a lot bigger, it's a lot wider. And, uh, oh, where's my tape? We want it to slide into this shelf here. Yeah. So then we can put a bucket on top. So I'm going to measure this. Do it at... Uh, 18, just over 18 and a quarter, 400 So that should slide now into there, like so. so what I need now to set the sensor out of here is uh, the depth of it. <sighs> I'll make about 10 inches. About 10 inches. Which is the good edge. Square edge. Thank you. 
That's a shell that I only need some taking out of the sides just to get her in. So she might knock home. She might knock home. So now what we need. Now what we need is the holes. They're gonna let the heat out from the uh on the heating element below. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. Two. Yeah, do them at two inches then. Two inches works out better. Two. Eight. A ten. Twenty. A five. And then we only want uh, probably, I don't know, one. Alright, everywhere they cross, we're going to drill a hole. <laughs> All these things piss you off. Watch this out. Start archery. Dead. Oh, I drilled them all. Thought I'd save you, save you watching me do that. But uh, drilled them on every, on every mark. Now we need to get this into here. So I'm hoping that it'll just ease its way, walk its way in, without me having to cut anything off of it. If the door shuts, that's the thing in. Excellent. And that's doesn't need any legs on it because it's in there. That's quite strong that. So next thing we need to do is start stripping this one down. So we need to turn the power off to the unit. Ooh, powered off. All the power is off. And then we can start unwiring that and taking everything out. So there's two lives running to the control panel uh, one earth and one neutral so I'm gonna unscrew these now take these out the fridge is redundant but we need the heating element boop, boop, boop. that's it now the heating element is stuck to the bottom with the uh, bloody silicon. So I'm gonna have to get them out. Stay to that. I've been digging garden with it, I think. Oh. Look at how strong that white silicon is. I tell you, white silicon, forget your shit's light stick and you know more nails. It's the white silicon's where it's at. That is the heating element, it's only a didion. It's only a didion. And what we got here? It's 45 watt, 
that's been fine. That's been plenty big enough for me. I hope people get the bigger ones, but uh, I don't think it's necessarily needed. And now we need to get these blocks off. So we've got the heating element out the bottom, we've took the fans out, this is what was powering the fans and the power from the fan from the plug goes into this block here and then off of this block we'll power in this fan and this fan. This fridge is now done with and we can get shut of it. Excellent, took the probe out for the STC so that fridge is done, now we need to crack on with the new fridge. All we need out of here is a hole in the side for the probe, a hole in the bottom for the element and a hole for this wire. Three holes. So let's see if we can't cock, cock it up. Friggin' right, so we did. So we need a, a drill. Uh, so it is, so it was. Around about there. I think. Yeah. Oh, that's nowhere near big enough, is it? Fellas, so we uh, get the 10 mil bit. Power through with that. Good old trusty 10 mil bits. <laughs> so that will sit in the bottom like so and that will go in there like so forth width feed it through I remember I fed it through last time I think I wired them up uh, taped them up but we'll just do this for a minute to see if we can't get it through Oh ah. Oh ah. Oh ah. Right, so that's the heating element sort of screwed in. Now we need one for the fans, which we'll put in here. So far so good, I ain't gone through any uh, ain't gone through any cooling pipes that I know of. And I need one on the other side for the probe. One on the other side for the probe. It will control the fridge. Let's have it about that uh, there. Hole for the probe, hole on the other side for the uh, power for the fans and the heating element with it already poking out. So I suppose now what we can do is we can get the fans screwed in ready to take the power.
before we get that set up let's see if we can still get a bucket in there with the fans in oh my god it's like a bloody clown car isn't it like a bloody clown car yeah loads of room loads of room now all we need to do then is uh, move her back into place, move this fridge out and wire her up and turn her on and uh, set her, see if she's working alright. And the final step for the fridge I guess is cutting the plug off her. Cutting the plug off because we're going to wire it straight into that block. So this wire is coming from the fridge, this is what the plug was on, and this is from the heating element, and we want them to now go into this block so that the STC can control both the heating element and the fridge. This part will differ from how you set your control unit up for the fridge. There are loads of videos out there, people that have got them on uh, little sandwich boxes with the STC and a plug so they can plug it into the wall but you'll have to do a little bit of research for that but this is how I'm doing it to get it into that little box there so both earths go together, neutral go together And there we go guys, she's, uh, she's wired up. We've got a probe in there, so let's turn her on, see if she's working. Oh, Jesus, wait for the bang. Put it to 17 degrees and see if the heat comes on. Ah, so I've wired them up wrong. So, the lives need switching round the fridge is in the heating side and the heating side is in the fridge side so I've just heard the fridge come on and it says heat here so let's turn her off and swap them over So the heat is now on, so if I put my hand on the heating element, I should start to feel that warm up. Yep, so I can feel that heating up now, so the heat is working, that's good. So now I'll drop her down to 10 degrees and hopefully the fridge will come on. So I appear to be working, the fridge is on, it should be cooling and uh, we were at 13.1 and it has started to flicker to 13. Looks like we haven't gone through any cooling pipes which is good and it looks like now we've wired it up correctly. This fridge is so quiet. I'm just going to let that cool down and see if we get to, uh, what is it we were after? 9 degrees. So if we set it to 13, 12.5 We'll see if the uh, set it to 12.5, and then we'll see if the, uh, the heater comes on. Right there, cold water, glass of cold water, speed things up. In with the probe into the glass of cold water. Oh, now we're dropping. So 11.5. Yeah, the heating comes on. So we're working. Everything's wired up right and we are we are working. Got a currently set for one degrees. I'm just doing a crash cooling cycle. See if the fridge 
needs altering inside the thermostat for the fridge you need it on the coldest setting because if you don't it won't get down to uh, to your crash chilling temps and now while that's happening I'm going to wire up the fans the computer fans so feed them through there through the hole that's already made oh, you son of a bitch try and get them out and down and through and by God's grace there we go now we're going to wire these up and electrocute me sir and like I said before the fans will move the air around so you get a better reading a truer reading you don't get any hot spots anywhere cold spots it's all moving around that's rewired let's check her with the plug plug her back in they should start whizzing around so plug her in and we have fizzy fizzy whizzy whizzy real round perfect Stuff that at the back, put some tape around that, and away we go, boys. New fermentation fridge, bigger, better. And that's it, fellas. It's as easy as that. The actual build of the fridge and getting the heating element and that installed is it's a piece of cake. The hardest part to building the fermentation fridge is wiring up the STC and making sure that the live from the cooling part to the uh, STC is connected to the fridge and the heat live that's connected to the SEC is connected to your heating element. Uh, you get them the wrong way around then when it says it's cooling, when it thinks it's cooling the uh, heating element's going to be on. When it wants to be heating the fridge is going to be on. So uh, that's what we did, we wired it up a bit wrong but we knew straight away and we could alter it and it's as simple as just changing two wires around. But that's it. I'm excited now to get a brew in it. I can go back to using the buckets. So I hope that's helped. I hope that has been informative. Uh, if it hasn't, if you've still got questions that need answering, then leave them below. And if I don't answer them, someone else will. But that's it, fellas, for another video. So as always, don't forget to thumb up the video because you're doing what I do. Don't forget to subscribe. There's a little red button down here that says subscribe. Click it, you won't miss out what's coming up next. Share the video, get it out there for all to see. And until next time. I'm out of here.